So hi everyone, now it's high time to discuss the answer key for this year UPSC CMS. So I will be discussing the first 40 questions for the paper 1. So let's start without any further delay. In first question they were talking about the treatment for chronic hepatitis with pegylated interferon. So this in the Harrison if we talk about there was a difference given between pegylated interferon and nucleoside analogs. So first statement they are saying as compared to nucleoside analogs it is a poorly tolerated drug. So yes, it's poorly tolerated as compared to the nucleoside. Nucleosides are well tolerated. So this statement is right. Next one they are, they are saying is, is there resistance to treatment with this? So we're talking about resistance. So here we can see there is no antiviral resistance, but there is there in the nucleoside analog. So this is wrong. Third is, peg interferon is not useful in patients of cirrhosis. No that is true in use it is used in cirrhosis transplantation immunosuppressed then no and the last question they were saying it is administered every week for 48 weeks then that, that is true so answer for this is 1 3 and 4 the next question they were talking about the management of tumor lysis syndrome in the management of tumor lysis syndrome again this is a chart from the harrison so they are saying that you have to maintain the hydration by administration of normal saline and you have to keep the urine pH at 7 or greater by sodium bicarbonate. In short, they are saying that urinary alkalization. Then you have to administer allopurinol and then monitor the serum chemistry. So, if after 24 to 48 hours, uric acid and creatinine remains high, then you have to correct the treatable renal failure and you have to start the resburicase here. And again, if it is high, then you have to delay the chemotherapy and start the hemodialysis. And again, if this is these values are high, then begin the hemodialysis. So in this case, urinary alkanization, IV fluid, and resburicase is true. Febuxostat is not treated in tumulysis syndrome. So answer for this is one, two, and three. Next, they are talking about the focal scissors, which is true about it. So in the focal scissors, there are three additional features that. It has no association with the Jacksonian march. It has the association with Stott's paralysis and it has the association with epilepsia partialis continua. So answer for this is 1, 2 and 3. Next question is they are talking about typical absence scissors. So we all know that in the typical absence scissors there is the abrupt 3 hertz spike and slow wave discharge on EEG. Let us see why other 3 options are wrong. Postrictal confusion? No, there is no postrictal confusion in the absence scissors. In that, if we talk about typical multifocal structure of abnormalities and less responsive to anticonvulsant, these two statements are true if we talk about atypical absence scissors, but not true for the typical. So, answer for this is abrupt T hertz spike. Next question they are talking about the contraindication to thrombolysis in acute ischemic stroke. So, the contraindications for thrombolysis and stroke is the BP should be more than 185 by 110 and they are giving more than 150 then this statement is wrong. Rest 3 are true. Why? Because we have the recent MI, recent head injury and GI bleeding in the last 3 weeks. So, answer for this is 1, 2 and 4. Next, they are talking about the axonal degeneration versus segmental demyelination if we talk about electrophysiological studies. So again a chart from Harrison. So axonal degeneration was compared with the segmental demyelination. So if we talk about distal latency then in the axonal degeneration it is normal while in case of segmental it is prolonged. So the first statement is true. Rest regarding conduction velocity, conduction block and temporal dispersion is wrong. Why? Because conduction velocity is normal in axonal while slow in segmental. Both conduction block and temporal dispersion are present in segmental not in axonal. So the answer for this is 1. Next question they are saying which one of the following drugs helps to maintain the abstinence by reducing craving for alcohol. So for cessation of alcohol to reduce the craving acamprosate calcium and baclofen have been favorable. So answer for this is acamprosate. Next question they are talking about BCR ABL1 oncoprotein exhibit constitutive activity by which of the following enzyme we all know it is by the tyrosine kinase like imatinib target a specific tyrosine kinase BCR ABL1 and we all know where do we use imatinib in the CML. 
Next question is again related to that that amatinib, desatinib, nilotinib and ponatinib example of which class of drugs as just now we studied the answer is tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Next question they are saying is Helicobacter pylori infection is associated with the development of which of the following lymphoid malignancy we all know it is associated with malt lymphoma. So, these are the suspected carcinogens and the associated cancer table given in the uh, Harrison. So, they have asked helicobacterial the answer is smart lymphoma. Which one of the following insulin preparation every year it is asked longest effective duration of action. So, in the insulin these are the short acting if we long in the options all four long acting were given and the longest effective duration was of degludic. So, answer for this is degludic. Next question is functioning pituitary adenoma most commonly arises from which of the following cells. Functional pituitary adenoma arise from all of the following cells, but the order of frequency is decreased lectotrop most common then gonadotrop and they were asking most commonly. So, answer is lectotrop in this case. Which one of the following anti diabetic drug is recommended for weight loss in obese patients? So, if we talk about anti obesity drugs, then among the uh, anti diabetic, clearer glutide is used. Next question they are saying is which of the statements are true regarding inflammatory bowel disease? So, ulcerative colitis, most common site involved is colon only, and they were giving terminal ileum that strong. Terminal ileum is for Crohn's. Cobblestone appearance in Crohn's, that's true skip lesion, skip lesion is a feature of Crohn's not ulcerative. So, the statement for this is 2 and 2 only is true for this. Next they are saying is which of the following case does paradoxical splitting occur. So, paradoxical or reverse splitting refers to the pathologic delay in aortic valve closure which is seen in left bundle branch block, it is not right it is left then right ventricular pacing severe aortic stenosis, HOCM, hyperobstructive cardiomyopathy and acute MI. So, answer for this is 1, 3 and 4. Next question is small sign is a clinical feature of, so small sign is a clinical feature of means what is small sign? Jugular venous distension that increases further on inspiration that is small sign seen in the case of constructive pericarditis. Next is modified Duke criteria. So, modified Duke criteria we have major and minor criteria. In major criteria we should have the positive blood culture and there should be the evidence of endocardial involvement. So, either we should have positive echocardiogram or new partial dehiscence of prosthetic valve or new valvular regurgitation while growth spot are the minor criteria. So, A, B, D are true they were asking not a major criteria. So, the answer is growth spot. Next is which of the following disease affect predominantly large arteries? So, if we talk about vasculitis, large vessel vasculitis are takayasu and giant cells. So, the answer for this is giant cell arthritis. Osborne wave in ECG show prolonged repolarization with distinctive convex elevation of J point. So, we all know Osborne wave are associated with systemic hypothermia. A decline in total lung capacity to less than 80 percent of patient predictive value is an indication of. So, a total lung capacity less than 80 percent of the patient predictive value defines the restrictive uh, physiology. So, uh, pathophysiology. So, answer is restrictive lung disease. There was a 28 year male suspected of having hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Which of the following statement are likely to be true on his examination? So, we all have heard about the Valsalva maneuver. In Valsalva maneuver, there were two exceptions that murmur associated with mitral wall prolapse and hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy become louder during the Valsalva maneuver. So, first statement they are saying that maneuver decrease the preload but cause the murmur to intensify that is true and the second one was decreased so that is wrong. Next they are saying is on squatting result in abrupt increase of preload and afterload which causes the decrease in the intensity and duration of murmurs associated with the mitral wall prolapse and hypertrophic obstructive while passive leg raise, raising also leads to the decrease in the intensity of murmur. So, in passive leg raising murmur is softer that is true in squatting again there should be softer not louder. So, answer for this is 1 and 3. 
Next question they are saying is that the Duffy antigen system serve as the receptor for which of the following protozoal parasite we all know it is the plasmodium vivax. Next question is with regard to the transfusion therapy cryoprecipitate is a rich source of which of the following. So, cryoprecipitate contains fibrinogen factor 8 and von Willebrand factor. So, answer is fibrinogen 8, von Willebrand factor so 1, 2 and 4. Next question they are saying is which of the following virus can be transmitted by transfusion of infected blood? We all know hepatitis B, C, HIV can be transmitted. We are parvovirus B19 also can be spread by contaminated blood. So, all four are correct. Next they are saying is mode of inheritance of hemophilia B. So, X-link recessive is the mode of inheritance for both hemophilia A and B. Which of the following conditions characteristically may present with a triad of hemolysis, pancytopenia and venous thrombosis? So, the answer for this is paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria because it has all three hemoly hemolysis, pancytopenia and venous thrombosis. So, next question they are saying is which of the following is associated with low MCV of red blood cells? So, low MCV means microcytic hypochromic they are talking about. So, we all know the pneumonia for microcytic hypochromic that is cetal for S sideroblastic, I for iron deficiency, T for thalassemia, A for anemia of chronic disease and L for lead poisoning. So, the answer in this case will be thalassemia. While sickle cell anemia comes under the normocytic normochromic under the hemolytic anemia and vitamin B12 folate are the macrocytic. So, answer for this is thalassemia. Next question is gonadotropin releasing hormone deficiency with hyposmia is the typically seen in. So, answer is Kalman syndrome. In the Kalman syndrome, general synthesis is defective associated with anosmia or hyposmia. Next question is that iodine has a complex effect on thyroid function. Very high concentration of iodine inhibit the thyroid hormone synthesis and release. This effect is known as, so this effect is known as wolf Tchaikov effect. Next question is, which of the following drugs are used for the treatment of thyrotoxic crisis? So, thyrotoxic crisis are management managed by the large doses of propyl thiouracil and it should be given orally by nasogastric. If it is not there, we can use methimazole, then stable iodide are used, propanolol are used, IV esmolol, glucocorticoids and antibiotics and sodium ipodate. So, propanol, sodium ipodate, propyl thiouracil, leothyronine is not used for the thyrotoxic crisis. Consider the following pharmacological agent which are used in the treatment of mixed edema coma. So, in mixed edema coma, leothyronine, oral levothyroxine, hydrocortisone and IV fluid antibiotics and oxygens are used. So, only levothyronine and levothyroxine are used, no use of sodium ipodate and carbimazole. Next question is what is the upper limit of age for the attainment of visual fixation of the following? So, upper limit age for the visual fixation is 2 months. So, answer the for this is 2 months. The medicine questions I have taken the reference from Harrison and Davidson and for the pediatrics I have taken the reference from the guy. So, this image is from the guy. Next is child develops stranger anxiety at the age of 6 months. So, answer for this is 6 months. Next is about the developmental milestones. So, immature pincer grips is developed at the time of 9 month, bisyllable mama baba is at the age of 9 months and waves bye bye at the age of 9 months. So, all 1, 2 and 3 are true. Next is able to walk alone and single word upper limit age is 18 months for both. So, answer is D. Next is we have to manage the case of kerosene oil ingestion in case of child. So, it is a hydrocarbon. So, if the child is asymptomatic then first we have to do remove all the clothes and wash the skin. No gastric lavage or MC should be done. We should go for chest x-ray. If the chest x-ray is normal then we have to discharge the child. If abnormal then we have to admit and observe. If the child is symptomatic in the starting then we have to manage by oxygen, IV fluids, beta agonis and monitor the child. But in this case they were saying that the child appears stable. So, we have to do the chest x-ray. So, radiography is the answer in this case. Next question is 
which of the following event is precipitated by active component of vaccine. So, by active component of vaccine, we get anaphylaxis after the measles vaccine, BCG related adenitis and pertussis encephalopathy. So, answer for this is 1, 2 and 4. Encephalopathy is after the BCG vaccine, not the DPT vaccine. So, 1, 3 and, one, three and 4 are true. Next question is, which of one of the following can be used for the developmental screening for use in community? See, these are some uh, tests used for the developmental screening. First is FATEC Baroda screening test. It is for the child psychologist. For age and stage questionnaire, it is age based and parent completed questionnaire for the age of 1 month to 5 and a half year. For Denver 2, it is for the child development in 4 domains. And Trivandrum development screening is primarily the screening. It is primarily the screening tool for use in community to identify children between the age of 0 to 6 years and development delay. So, answer for this is Trivandrum development screening chart. Next question they are saying is which of the following WHO clinical criteria are indicative of severe pneumonia? So, convulsion, lower chest indwelling, strider. Why inability to feed is not there? It there is not able to drink for the age of 2 months to 5 years. If we talk about less than 2 months, then inability to feed would be true. So, answer for this is 1, 2 and 4. Next question they are saying is for the 11 month unhumanized child, which vaccine sh we should give in the first visit. So, for the unhumanized child less than 1 year, we should give BCG, OPV, Penta, Rota, IPV, PCV, MR, Japanese and Vitamin A. So, according to you, there would be a confusion between A option and D option. OPV, DPT, Hepatitis B are both play. The BLFA, BCG and MR, we have to choose among two. Look, BCG can be given only up to the one year, while MR can be given up to the age of 5 year. So, what would you choose in this case? We should go for BCG in this case because it cannot be given later while MR can be given. So, these are the 40 questions. So, let us discuss the rest 40 question in the part 2. So, I hope you found this video useful. 